come on at an even angle here. There is a step on, on both sides, gentlemen. Just watch your footing. It might be easier to kind of hold and sidestep. We're going to lift all the way to the tip of the end.
I would like to thank the military for being here and for honoring and respecting my dad. Thank you. I'd like to begin with having the great-grandchildren come up here right in the front. Grandma will lead you. We're going to have you sing, I am a child of God. Thank you. 
back with your family. Thank you very much. <laughs> Probably many of you have heard this story, but this, this chain brings it to mind. I wore a, a chain very similar to this for, I don't know, like a year or so when I was about 10 years old. And my dad took me downstairs in what we call the fruit room. It's where our food storage was. And he asked me to give him my chain, and I did. Did he in turn a cigar? He took out this chain, and he traded me my cheap ball chains and his nice chains. And I've had this chain on ever since. I mean, I bathe and stuff like that. It's had it ever since. It's a special moment for me and my dad. I'll share a couple of thoughts. When I was about 18 years old, I worked at a lumber yard. We had uh, probably about five of us that decided to go out rabbit hunting out in the West Desert. We left after work, so it was probably 5 o'clock. We drove out in a, in a Jeep. And we had, probably not very smart, but we had rifles in the back of the Jeep. And we were riding through the brush. And the driver got a little bit zealous started going a little faster and he would come across a rabbit and he would start chasing the rabbit. Well, we hit the first ditch and that shook us all up pretty good. And then we hit the second ditch and that just brought the Jeep to a complete stop. The oil pan broke on the Jeep. It took us about two hours to walk from there to get back to where we could make a phone call. By this time it was, I want to say, close to two o'clock in the morning before we got out to where we could make a call. Nobody had a cell phone. It didn't exist. I was the only one in the group. I was the only one in the group that needed to call for help and I knew my dad would come. No deals in the bank send anyone they can call so I called my dad. My dad probably got out there about 3 a.m. maybe 3 30 and then he took each one of those my co-workers to their homes and back to the bank. I think I am most proud of my dad for the manner in which he loved my mom. He took care of my mom. I don't think my mom ever wanted for anything. She had everything that she wanted more.
I'm very proud of my sisters for what we've been through with mom and dad over the course of the last years. And I'm very proud of my, my kids and their spouses for everything that they've done. We'd like to turn the time, open mic time, over to anyone who feels like they would like to come up and sit, share a memory, whatever you want to, whatever you feel the need to share. And then we'll ask that Bryce Walker give the dedication on the grave. And then we'll say our goodbyes. Cycles so they would work just right and I was 12 13 years old and I would go out and sit and just watch him and he would explain everything to me and he would turn to me and he would say should we go for a ride and I said yeah so we would pack up lunch and we went for a ride and didn't have my motorcycle motorcycle license didn't matter just he and I been around the belt route while it was being built in many different places and that's a cherished memory that just me and my dad had. And I am grateful to my husband for not once did he complain as I was serving my mom and dad. He was very supportive of me and I appreciate that. And I do know that Grandma and Grandpa loved each and every one of them.
um, I like Lene. Um, I didn't know he did it for everybody, but I broke my arm when I was, oh, I think I was like 11. And my dad stayed up all night telling me about how the body works and how it heals. And he got up and went to work the next morning. Um, I don't remember this, but I guess when I was, I think I was 18 months, my mom and dad told me that um, my dad was up working on the roof and I climbed up the ladder and got on the roof to find my dad. And they didn't know how I got up there. They took me down and I guess I climbed and pulled myself up with each rung and they were amazed that I got up there and I didn't fall. But they said it was pretty amazing. But I am thankful for the time that I had with my mom and my dad taking care of them. And I love them so much and I'm going to miss them. I love you guys. apologize you're gonna laugh but I wrote some notes <laughs> that if <laughs> this opportunity presented itself I had some things I wanted to say Russell M Nielsen said life does not begin with birth nor does it end with death prior to our birth we dwelled as spirit children with our father in heaven there we eagerly anticipated the possibility of coming to earth and obtaining a physical body knowingly we wanted the risks of mortality which would allow the exercise of the agency and accountability. This life was to become a probationary state, a time to prepare to meet God. But we regarded the returning home as the best part of that long-awaited trip, just as we do now. Before embarking on any journey, we like to have some assurance of a round-trip ticket. Returning from Earth life, from Earth to life in our heavenly home requires passage through and not around the doors of death. We were born to die and we died to live. As seed seedlings of God, we barely blossom on earth. We fully flower in heaven. Family is everything. They are what we live for, die for, endure the many trials and joys for. Without family, what would we live for? Be motivated by. Men are that they might have joy. Family is a central part of the gospel. Families are forever. It takes on a whole new meaning when death is upon us, and those sweet words bring a healing balm to our spirits. Our prophet said beautifully, Moreover, we cannot fully appreciate joyful reunions later without tearful separations now. The only way to take sorrow out of death is to take love out of life. We all die, no matter how young, beautiful, healthy, or cautious you are. Someday your body will become lifeless and friends and family will mourn you, but they cannot bring you back. Nevertheless, because of Jesus Christ, your death will be temporary. Your spirit will one day reunite with your body, and this resurrected body will not be subject to death, and you will live in the eternities free, free from pain and suffering. Death separates the spirit and the body, which are the soul of man. That separation evokes pangs of sorrow and shock among those left behind. The hurt is very real. And I love this. Our limited perspective would be enlarged if we could witness the reunion on the other side of the veil when the doors of death open up to those returning home. Dieter F. Udor said, this resurrected body will not be subjected to death. It is reunited with your spirit to never be separated again and you will live in the eternities free from pain and physical suffering. And this is my absolute favorite that gives me the most comfort. Our prophet also said, I testify that the veil of death is very thin, and I know by experiences too sacred to relate that those who have gone before are not strangers to leaders of this church, to us and to you. Our loved ones may be just as close as the next room separated only by the doors of death. 
I'm so proud of Grandpa. I'm proud of the life that he lived. I'm proud of the example that he set for each of us. And I'm so proud of this amazing family that we have. There's so much love. There's so much support. The examples of my dad and my wonderful aunts has been life-changing. I know it has not been easy. I know many tears have been shed. <clears throat> but I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of each and every one of you. And I'm proud of everything that this family has done. And my hope and prayer is that these relationships continue, that we don't forget that down here on earth, these relationships, and even in the eternities, this is what matters, are the relationships. There's no earthly possession that we can have that could replace what we have right here. And I hope and know for each and every one of you that I love you, and I want to bear my testimony that I know that we will see our lovely grandma and our very handsome grandpa again. I want to testify that I'm so grateful for the plan of salvation, the plan of happiness. I'm grateful for a savior who died and atoned for us to take the sting out of death. And that comes to the forefront of our minds in moments like this when we've lost a wonderful man, even at the ripe age of 88, 87, almost 88. <laughs> He was strong and fierce and loved deeply and took care of his family. And I hope and pray that we can continue to take that legacy forward. I say these things in the name of Christ. Amen. All of us grandkids all have a very similar memories of grandma and grandpa and it was because they had an ability to make us feel like we were their only their only grandchild uh, they were so good at giving us 100 percent of their attention and grandpa in particular i would feel sad if i didn't talk about how fun it was to get under his skin we all loved to make a little bit of noise or in my case make sure i switched the ice maker over to crushed ice just so that we could watch Grandpa get a little upset, or maybe we would throw each other off the treadmill, or David and I would go out and mess up his precious scrub oak out in the front yard. There was always something uh, to do that got Grandpa a little huffy just for a minute, and then Grandma would either get after him, or he would calm down by himself and come back later and apologize. And that's a part of just Grandpa. Another thing that I think almost all of us got to experience was our special visits at school when he would come by to visit with the book depository or uh, with the book sales and he would come by and he would sit down with each and every one of us and have lunch and take us out on the playground and make us feel so proud because we had just the coolest grandpa and made all of the kids at school jealous because he was out there playing soccer with us or playing basketball or dodgeball and i think we were lucky like uh, Lene said, he was always into the medical stuff and they always tried to take care of themselves. And we got, as grandkids, got to benefit from that because we had youthful grandmas and grandpa out there playing volleyball with us, playing chase, playing tag, and just, just having a great time. Um, my personal favorite memory of grandpa was a trip that uh, I took with my dad. It's hard. It's hard losing somebody. Uh, we went for for a weekend, just out on the four wheelers, cruised around, camped in a tent, and hung out with all Grandpa's crazy friends. And we just we just had fun. I was I wasn't too terribly old, but it was it was dedicated Dad and Grandpa time for a full weekend, and I loved it. I had so much fun. Had some. It was a good time. So that was that was my favorite my favorite grandpa memory was that that time spent with my, my dad and grandpa doing that. Uh, we 
sure. Sure love and appreciate him. And uh, I hope, hope that he realizes how much he meant to all of us grandkids. to grandpa like Brock said get upset about things and I'd just laugh and then he'd laugh with me I too felt like the coolest person on the playground because of my grandpa his visits and his conversations with us and his showing us of his pens and sometimes giving us one just taking the time to be with us meant more than he will ever know. But maybe hopefully he'll know now. I know that Grandpa went to heaven and that he is with Grandma. And I know that he was drawn to this gospel because he knew with every part of his stubborn heart that it was true. And I'm so grateful that he lived that his entire life. I am so, so grateful for this family. I am so grateful for all the love that we've been able to share amongst ourselves. And I pray that we can all continue to reach out and take care of one another. And I'm just so, so grateful for the opportunity that I had to be down here in their home, to be able to feel their spirit and their love and see their wonderful pictures. Thank you so much. And we love you, Grandpa. There was a white elephant party. And the women put it together and they were to bring something that was extremely valuable to their husbands. And they wrapped it up and they passed them out to different members of the families that were there. My dad opened up his gift. It, they had done an exchange. And they said, well, what'd you get, Martin? Oh, I just got some old rope. And this guy in the back said, that is not some old rope. That is a lariat. And I'll tell you something about it. He, he was a little bit irritated. And then somebody opened up my dad's collection of pens that he didn't know was there. And they said something similar. What'd you get? And he said, a bunch of old pens. And my, my dad set him straight that he'd been collecting those pens for years and years and years. And they, were, they did get those, he did get his pens back and the guy got his rope back. But it was just fun to pull that little prank on their husbands. Those of you who knew my dad, when he would go into a store, if you couldn't find him, he would be over at the pen and pencil rack looking at pens and pencils. That's where he would be. I 
I don't really like getting up and talking in front of people. But for him, I will. <laughs> My favorite memory of him. I don't know if you guys all remember when he got me. Blonde, blonde, blonde hair. <laughs> I came to his house one day with dark hair. <laughs> and he was like, uh, Where's my blonde Jesse? He was extremely upset. <laughs> and this, every single time I saw him, he, that was my name now. Where's my blonde Jesse? Uh, he was so sweet. And when I, those hearts that we wrote on and put on the wall, I wrote that memory of that blonde <laughs> Jesse. And I told him, as he's lying there and he couldn't speak to me. But he started to cry. And I'll never forget that. I will love him forever. learned I'm the spokesman for my wife. She's the she's the sweetheart, but she's like, you're going to go up there, you're going to go up there. <laughs> so here I am. Uh, two things. I'm uh, very proud to be one of the very select few that got to mow his lawn. You that uh, mowed his lawn know what I'm talking about. He, uh, he was, it was a lot of fun to, to mow the lawn. It was an honor to mow his lawn, but it was also nerve-wracking. If there was one blade of grass left on that lawnmower, he made sure to make sure that it was taken care of. Make sure that lawnmower was nice and clean, too, when you cut it away. Yes, he taught me. My, one of my uh, memories that I remember the most is, is how he taught me everything on that lawnmower, precisely what to do. Just the specifics and the details. It was awesome. And it was really cute how he would always kind of look with his peripherals to make sure that you were paying attention to what he was doing. <laughs> and that I was learning that. Uh, the other fun memory that uh, Jessica reminded me of was um, when my mother-in-law, Jessica's mom was up here with us. We went to their house. And uh, I don't know all the details, but the short of it is that he needed help moving a TV. And uh, we had to step out, or we went to grab food for him. And, and we agreed to help him move it, but we went to grab this food. And when we came back, he had already tried to move it himself. And of course, it had dropped, and it was broken. <laughs> I guess later it was outside, like tossed outside, you know. So stubborn, but an awesome, awesome man. And he just, like we've all agreed that he just wanted to take care of things, and he had just a very special spirit. And I bear my testimony that his spirit is with grandmas. And we'll see him again. I wasn't going to do this, but I know he's here, so I wanted to, to hear this. So, well, I don't know if all of you know, but um, I never got to know my grandparents, so I, when I met them, um, Grandma made sure that I knew that she didn't meet her grandparents either, so we were the same. Every single time I saw them, Grandma reminded me of that, and Grandpa was there to confirm it and give me a hug. And just let me know that they were my grandparents and they are my grandparents. And I, I feel blessed that I got to know them, that I got to meet them, that you guys share your grandparents with me. They are very special to me. Thank you, Grandma.
Grandpa. Thank you, Grandma. And this is what they've always done. Uh, they bring the family together. So I know every time we get together, they'll be there too. I just wanted to say, Grandpa got a TV a half hour later. <laughs> after he, after he, <laughs> he wouldn't wait. And Grandma was really worried that he was trying to climb up, climb up but he wouldn't listen. So, for the consequences. But, you know, he was stubborn and so loving. And um, it was a blessing for me to be able to spend a couple days a month, you know, watching Grandma back then. and. It was so much fun to clean the floor and have Grandpa right next to me, making sure that, look, there's a little something over there. It was, it was awesome. I loved it. So I just want to say I love him very much. I love his family. I love the, the love that you can feel. And um, I love that this, these relationships are eternal. And um, I know that Grandpa is happy. As a little kid right now with grandma and with his parents and that makes me happy and I know that families can be together forever and I share this oh, and I don't want to forget to say that I am grateful for uh, mom, I'm grateful for you guys, for amazing kids that you've been to him but me personally, oh, I'm grateful for mom and everything she's done and there were many times when we wanted to have grandma, but she was busy taking care of his mom, her mom, or her dad. So, um, you're an amazing daughter. You all are amazing kids. So I wanted to say, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. I just wanted to say my favorite memory. We, um, when Brock was starting the business, we could kind of go back and forth. So we used to go and visit Grandma and Grandpa a lot in St. George, and that's kind of what made us want to move there. But as you guys know, Grandpa's fridge was always full of drinks, right? Coke, Diet Coke, whatever you wanted. So that was kind of our thing is me and Grandpa would always eat salt and vinegar chips and drink Diet Coke. Well, one time when we were down there, I opened up the Diet Coke and I tasted it and I was like, oh, this is bad. It's gone bad, right? Like, it's no more bubbly. So I quietly walked over and kind of just, like, threw it in the garbage. Well, he noticed, of course, right? What's wrong with the drink? Well, Grandpa, it expired, like, nine months ago. There's no more fuzz in it. <laughs> so he was like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to the store. So he ran to the store to get us fresh Diet Coke. And Grandpa never let me forget that. Every time we went to his house, he'd bring me... Here's a fresh Diet Coke, see the expiration date. So if you ever got a non-expired drink from his fridge, you're welcome. So, But I sure love him. He is my boyfriend. He called me his girlfriend. And I'm just so grateful. All my grandpas died when I was young. So he was my grandpa too. So thank you. Uh, just to, to start, I wanted to share my one of my favorite memories. I have so many memories with Grandma and Grandpa, but one of my favorite memories was when we went on a trip back east um, to visit Mabu, where they went on their mission, and to see where he grew up in Detroit. And I, that was just a really special memory for me, being able to spend so much time with them. Um, I don't know about the rest of the grandkids, but when I was young, I was absolutely terrified of Grandpa. He scared me to death. <laughs> but um, as I got older, I got to know better. And for the last 28 years or so, I would say he's probably one of the least terrifying people I ever knew. I just love him and Grandma. They were some of my best friends. I will miss them a lot, but I just want to know them to know that I love them. I'm so grateful that they're part of my life and I can't let you see them. I had the opportunity to get to be with Grandpa a lot these last few weeks. 
something I will always treasure, being with my aunts and my dad. But the one thing, Amber and I were there one afternoon, and Amber was always trying to get Grandpa to talk. She wanted to hear everything that Grandpa had to say. And <laughs> she was trying really hard and in walked some nurses to say to do some work on Grandpa and help him do some things. And he pipes up and he says, hello, ladies. <laughs> and it just was so funny. Amber was like, we had to walk in the bathroom and Amber was sitting there and she's like, I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous that he likes them so much more. And I turned to her and I said, but you know, I'm, I'm grateful that they're taking such good care of him, that they were wonderful over there. And we had the opportunity to hear those nurses' experiences and just like many of you have said, he made people feel loved. And I like to think from the experiences that the nurses said that he loved them. He loved them very, very much and they loved him. One nurse actually in particular took a double shift so she could be with him all the way till the end. And it just was incredible to get to see what was going on those last couple of months for grandpa and I too we have the best grandparents and they made us all feel like we were number one and I sure do love them and can't wait to see them again I don't want to stop anybody who wants to come up, but if we're done, maybe we'll ask Bryce if he'll come up and do the dedication. I want to make one quick mention. Uh, one of my last experiences with him. Um, Leslie and I were driving back from some event, I'm pretty sure it was a family event in Bountiful. And uh, I've been in education now for about the last five years. And I had a three year stint earlier. And it was fun to be able to converse with him because of, you know, after all he was in education and he was a principal. And I told him, you know, for the first time, I've realized what it is to be a principal. And I said, you have students that whine, you have teachers that whine, and you have parents that whine, and sometimes even your superiors, the district. I said, and you're in the middle of all that. And he goes, that's about right, Bryce. <laughs> I just like to say, that gave me a new appreciation for who he was. It takes a special man to be a principal. And of course, he was sort of an authority figure for all of us, wasn't he? Just naturally, he had that gift. All right, I'd like to dedicate the grave now. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and by the authority of the Holy Melchizedek Priesthood that I hold, I dedicate and consecrate this burial plot for the mortal remains of Martin Anthony Basic and pray that this may be a hallowed place, a protected place, until the resurrection. That he may rise in the morning of the first resurrection in glory with a perfect body for eternity. And Father, as spokesman of the basic family at this time, we all pray that thou wilt take him into thy kingdom, that he will enjoy the reunion with his wife and his loved ones, that he may know that we love and respect and honor him. Father, we are all here because of him. We have good lives, we live in comfort, and we feel like we have been richly blessed by his example. 
He's given us so much. And we pray that we might all know of his love for us, that we may be comforted. We are especially mindful of Marty, Linnea, Leslie, and Laurie, who have been so good to take care of their dad. We ask you to bless and comfort them. We pray that we might have an added measure of thy Holy Spirit with us now. We might remember this time, this sacred time, as again we honor Martin Anthony Basic, grateful to know that he lives on and thy plan of salvation has come to fruition as he has kept his first and second estate. We love thee, Father. We ask again for thy blessings to be with us, and we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Please be safe.